All right, right now we're going to discuss Hamas and Hanukkah and uh, the disease of anti-Semitism on college campuses. Rabbi Shmuley Botiech is America's rabbi. The Washington Post and Newsweek call him the most famous rabbi in America, one of the uh, leading defenders of Israel and appears as a regular guest in international media outlets. He's also one of the world's foremost and uh, respected and oft-quoted relationship experts, the, uh, the author of 36 books, including the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, a Recipe for Passion and Intimacy. Rabbi Botiak, welcome to The Richard Serrett Show. How are you? I am well, thank God. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for having me. And happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. It's the last night, so we snuck it in. That's it. One more crazy night. Um, I want to, first of all, if I could get your reaction to, uh, very disappointing for me as a Canadian, and I know many Jewish Canadians, the what I would refer to as the total betrayal, not only of Israel, but Jews living in Canada. Canada siding with countries like Iran and North Korea and uh, China in voting for a, a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Uh, and that vote, that, um, you know, did not include any condemnation of Hamas. I uh, didn't demand the hostages back, just call for an out-and-out -out ceasefire. Your your reaction to that vote in Canada? Justin Trudeau is a national embarrassment to Canada. He has no moral compass. He has no backbone. Uh, he's really a follower. He's never a leader. Uh, I've rarely seen a internationally prominent figure, you know, a, a leader of one of the G7 countries who has – the constant need to be loved. He just needs to be embraced. He rarely ever stakes out moral positions. The, the war between Israel and Hamas is the clearest example of good versus evil. Hamas is evil incarnate. They gang rape women. They burn late babies alive. They behead those babies. I went to the killing fields outside of Gaza myself a month ago. I saw the blood congealed on the walls to to three to four inches. I saw the knives that were used from the victims' homes in the kitchens by the Hamas terrorists to stab them to death. I saw the giant um, pickup trucks with the 50 caliber machine guns on the back. Justin Trudeau has made no such trip. President Biden, the most powerful man on earth, went to Israel five, four or five days after the attacks. Uh, it's not that Trudeau is an anti-Semite. He's not. It's not that Trudeau doesn't care about Jews. I'm sure he does. It's not that he doesn't like Jews. I'm sure he does. It's that he is a he is a coward. A coward should not lead. He actually made statements to the effect that, like, stop killing babies. I mean, Justin, with all due respect, can you shut up? Stop killing babies. What do you even know? His ignorance is on display for the entire world. And and I just kind of feel bad that most Canadians have to be um, stained by his disgusting amorality. So that's – there it is. Sorry to mince words, but when people are calling <laughs> for a second holocaust of the Jewish people, I'm not going to be silent. Yes, the um, – the attempt to draw this moral equivalency between what Hamas is doing and how the Israelis are defending themselves. Uh, and I mean, this, this is becoming so pervasive in our society where, where people cannot, I mean, they lack this moral clarity uh, where they think that somehow, you know, again, Israel is this apartheid state, and yet it's so bad that Arabs from all over the world are flooding into Israel to live there and to thrive there. Um, uh, and and uh, so Israel is this apartheid state, and the Palestinians are, uh, you know, they're the victims of a genocide. The Israelis are the settlers, the colonizers, and so forth. Just a total lack of understanding of history. Uh, and again, this lack of uh, moral clarity, how did that how does that happen in the West? I mean, we used to be, you know, the great defenders uh, of Israel. You know, those countries that bless the Jews will be blessed and those that curse the Jews will be cursed. How did this turn around so quickly here? Well, it, firstly, it's the product of 2000 years of anti-Semitism. Uh, yes, the West has come to the realization, or I should say some of the West, especially in the United States, evangelical Christians, for example, who take the Bible. At its word, that if you stand with the Jewish people, God will stand with you. But that's not been true for 2,000 years, where Jews have been slaughtered in the Crusades, falsely accused in blood libels of drinking the blood of Christian children, 
massacred for a lie that we killed Jesus when all the Roman historians of the time are clear that it was the Romans who ordered the murder of Jesus. I wrote a whole book about this called Kosher Jesus. So it's not a new hatred, but let's just bring it, uh, let's make it modern and bring it up to date. Um, to say that Israel is an apartheid state, go to the war in Gaza. I have two sons serving in the IDF right now. We pray for their safety every day. You will see that approximately 20% of Israel soldiers are black. They're black Jews. Um, I take pictures of them all the time so that people, you know, see it. So many black Jewish idea of soldiers are being murdered by Hamas. Well, there goes the apartheid. The genocide argument is the most laughable of all because people don't even know what the word genocide means. Most people in their ignorance think that genocide means, you know, killing a lot of people. It's based on numbers. It's not. Genocide was a term coined by the Holocaust surviving lawyer, Jewish lawyer in the 1940s. His name was Raphael Lemkin. It means geno, or ethnicity, side is murder. So it's the murder of an ethnicity. It's most seek to exterminate an entire people the way the Germans try to kill all the Jews. Well, if Israel is guilty of a genocide of the Arabs, why is Israel giving full rights and citizenship to 1.8 million 1.8 million Arab citizens of Israel who have, e who have even more rights than Jewish citizens. They're very easy to prove because the Arab citizens are not drafted into the military. Now, if you think that doesn't matter, remember that the United States during Vietnam was torn apart at the seams over the issue of the military draft. Arabs are not drafted. They do not have to fight. They are not fighting in Gaza. They are not fighting in Hezbollah in the north. My sons, who are uh, volunteers in the IDF, they're called Chayalim, but they lone soldiers. They are fighting. Um, so there, there goes that lie. Where does it come from, Richard? Simple. It comes from this stupid thing that we call underdog. You automatically, well, it comes from anti-Semitism, but underdog. You automatically choose what you perceive to be the weaker party, and then you say they must be the ones who are who are righteous. Based on that thinking, by 1944, Hitler and the Germans, who were being destroyed by German bombs, including many Canadian bombs, German cities being wiped out by Canadian bombs, would be considered the righteous party. That Hitler and the Nazis would be considered the righteous party because they were the weaker party. It's a stupid argument. Obviously, it's just an insipid as an eye argument. Excellent point. All right. Uh, Rabbi Botiak, we'll take a quick time out, come back and uh, discuss further Hamas, Han Hanukkah and the disease of anti-Semitism on college campuses. Rabbi Shmuley Botiak, America's rabbi and uh, the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, a recipe for passion and intimacy now available. Back with more of our conversation in three minutes. And we are back with America's rabbi, Rabbi Shmuley Botiak and... Uh, the author of 36 books, including the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, A Recipe for Passion and Intimacy. We're talking about Hamas, Hanukkah, anti-Semitism on uh, college campuses. We had a, a mayor, we have a mayor, unfortunately, in Calgary, Jody Gondek, who refused to attend a menorah lighting ceremony because she said that, uh, well, it's getting too political. It's all tied up in, with Israel now. Um, but isn't that the point? I mean, you, you cannot separate Hanukkah from Israel. Um, or am I wrong? Is yeah. that true? Is that true? She refused to attend a menorah lighting with the light yes, she did. public official accountable to the people? Yes, she did. Just, uh, let me just go on the record by saying that is disgusting, vomit-inducing, stomach-turning, and deeply anti-Semitic. I, I am shocked. I, I think that's the first time I've heard of any public official in history, uh, recent modern history, refused to attend a menorah lighting because women were gang raped in Israel. L let me just be clear. And she's a woman, you said, the mayor, Correct. right? Yes, Mayor Jody Gondek. You know, I want to I want to I want to speak about the utter hypocrisy. You are allowed to uh, rape women as long as they're Jewish. Otherwise, the U.N. will object. The police will arrest you. Uh, women's groups, feminist groups, women's rights groups will protest against you. They will try to cancel you. We have we have evidence of hundreds of Israeli women and Arab women, by the way, and Thai women who were on October the 7th were, were not just raped, not just beheaded, but gang raped. They were passed from Hamas terrorists to Hamas terrorists. Some of them gang raped by other ten men. I wonder what this mayor has to say about that. Maybe she would say, look, if they were Canadians, we care. If they were not Jews, 
if they were Muslims they would care, but because they're Jewish, nobody cares. We never cared. During the Holocaust, 10,000 Jews were murdered every single day. I want to repeat that for all you Canadian listeners. During the Holocaust, 10,000 Jews, and this is in the lifetime of all of your parents, were murdered every single day. That's three 9-11s a day that the Jewish people experienced. For four straight years, six million. Um, it's, it's a number until you try to think about every single name. Uh, Yad Vashem in Israel, Israel the Holocaust was only compiled about 5.3 million of the actual names of the people. So this is no longer an estimate. We know the numbers. And we know the individuals. We know the faces. We know the names. I'd like to ask this there. How could you possibly refuse to bring some light to the darkness and celebrate a Jewish festival because you say that Hanukkah is political? How much do you have to hate Jews? And I'm actually openly accusing her of being a Jew hater. Madam, you are an anti-Semite. You are a disgrace to your community, and you should really resign. You have uh, – Canada is a great world power. It fought in the First World War. It fought especially the Nazis along with Churchill. Uh, in the Second World War, you have disgraced Canada and you should resign. Well, unfortunately, it gets, it's, it gets even worse, uh, Rabbi, because we had the city council in Moncton, New Brunswick. Well, they tried to cancel the menorah lighting ceremony there, except that, uh, thankfully there was such a, an uprising and a backlash from the citizens of Moncton that they, they uh, reversed their position. But uh, had it not been for that, Moncton would have uh, canceled their menorah lighting uh, ceremony. Is, 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 is Canada losing its mind? Do they, and, and are they not aware of how this is viewed by the rest of the world? You know, when I was a kid, they used to say that some people have such open, they're, 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 they're so open minded that their like brains have fallen out. Now that's a little bit mean. So let me try to give it a more sophisticated twist. Tolerating the intolerable is the liberalism of fools. Let me repeat that. Tolerating the intolerable is the liberalism of fools. Canada is tolerating the intolerable. They are tolerating Hamas, which is a genocidal blood cult. All Hamas wants is blood, blood, blood. They're talking about I, – I, I wish I could have these people on the show with me. I would ask them – are you aware that Khalid Mashal, the head of the head of Hamas, Ismail Ania, the deputy head of Hamas, they don't live in Gaza. They live in five star accommodation. They each have a private jet. One is worth about seven billion dollars. The other is worth four billion dollars. They have stolen all the people of Gaza's wealth. Have they ever criticized these people? Now let's go to Hamas itself. We now have evidence. Every single night you can turn on the TV and even the biggest Jew haters, the biggest anti-Semites will see that Hamas built a network of tunnels that is probably more ex expansive than even the New York City subway system. How much did it cost to build that? $50 billion, $100 billion? Why didn't that money go to the people of Gaza over the past 20 years to build schools, to buy bread? to build hospitals, to build universities. All of this was built to create a terror infrastructure simply to kill Jews. And now the people of Gaza, who are the collateral damage of this war, they don't even have a single shelter to go to. The Hamas fighters do. They go into these tunnels and they're protected. But the people of Gaza are the ones who are suffering. And all of these discriminating anti-Semite public officials in Canada have any condemnation for Hamas whatsoever? The answer is no, they don't, because they're biased against the Jewish people. They are being infected by a 2,000-year-old hatred, of which they may not even be conscious, or automatically, they must condemn Israel and the Jewish nation amidst their total, complete, and embarrassing ignorance. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's very... It's very distressing. Um, disappointing is not the word. I mean, it's quite frankly, it's depressing. What is it's, happening? It's, a, it's, a, it's embarrassing. It embarrasses Canada. You know, for, for anyone listening to this recently, I have a simple question to ask. How often do any of you think that the, that the two words, Justin Trudeau, are, are mentioned on the evening news in, in England, in Korea, and Japan? His name never comes up. He's not a leader. He's a local parochial leader in Canada. Now, Canada is the second largest landmass on Earth, second only to Russia. How is it that 
The Prime Minister of Canada has no following. No one looks up to him. No one respects him. Should Canada assert muscularly its place among the nations as a moral power, as a nation that speaks out for ethics, as a nation that speaks out for human rights? I bet you that 50% of Europeans couldn't even couldn't even mention or name the Prime Minister of Canada because he's a non-entity. L- like him or hate him, everybody knows Joe Biden. Biden. Like him or hate him, everybody knows everybody knows Donald Trump. And it's not because the United States is the strongest nation on earth with the largest economy. It's because these people have convictions. Like him or hate him. You can like or hate President Xi of China, but everybody knows him. And it's it's the same kind of thing. Trudeau stands for nothing. All of these Milk toast, vanilla, weak Canadian leaders are an embarrassment to Canada, and they belie and they undermine Canada's phenomenal reputation as fighters of Hitler during the war. Some of the bravest Allied troops that we had in the most dangerous missions were Canadians. Even more recently, look at uh, Rubio Dallaire, who was the Canadian commander of R- Rwanda. Yes. One of the great men alive today, whose, whose biographies I've read, whose autobiography I read, one of the great men. He should be the prime minister of Canada. At least he stands for something. He tried to stop a genocide. Justin Trudeau has beautiful hair, and that's about it. That's it. And unfortunately, we may have to endure this, uh, this narcissistic, um, malignant individual for another two years. Unless uh, somehow the government falls. Uh, Rabbi, I've got to take another quick time out. We'll uh, we'll come back and I'll just keep you for a few more moments. And uh, we'll also talk about the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, a recipe for passion and intimacy. Back with more of our conversation right after these. All right. Welcome back. Just a few minutes remain with Rabbi Shmuley Bothiak, America's rabbi and the author of 36 books, including the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, a recipe for passion and intimacy. And uh, Rabbi, I wanted to ask you, um, I, I'm finding now with, with young people, I remember when I was teaching uh, college a few years ago, and um, there would be, you know, young, young ladies in class, and they were, you know, interested in, you know, meeting young men and going out on a date and, you know, that whole courtship ritual, which seems to have gone by the boards and the young men not interested at all, like just they want to go home and play on their their uh, Xbox and play Dungeons and Dragons. And it's a miracle that anybody gets together uh, anymore with young people and, and, you know, actually get married and have families. Uh, what, what do you tell um, young people about the importance of, you know, fostering relationships with the opposite sex? Well, we're not supposed to have to tell them. They're supposed to feel it intuitively. Attraction is something that changes. Right. It's about being diminished. And in kosher sex, and yes, I keep mentioning this is the 20th anniversary edition. When I published the book a quarter of a century ago, I really thought it would be for a couple of friends and family. And it became an international bestseller that was translated into 17 languages. We've done a whole new um, version here. But the the unexpected... Uh, diminishment of the gravitational pull, what we call attraction, erotic attraction between men and women is shocking. I attribute it to a number of things. First of all, I think really uh, many men are becoming porn adult. They really prefer these airbrushed, uh, naked, uh, fake women uh, on all these uh, sites. By the way, a lot of them come from Canada, like Pornhub. Um, And uh, porn is 70% of the internet. So like... Why waste money on dinner and why waste money on conversation when you can just like, you know, use your phone? Porn is a big problem. It's a, it's a problem that we're not really addressing. But then you have the, the, the cynicism of the women themselves. A lot of women feel that guys don't want to invest themselves into relationships right now. Like you said, it's not just a question of going home and playing on video games. It's a question of going out to dinner, having monosyllabic conversations. We're becoming less interesting people because all of us are addicted to screens. We're not really accustomed to real human interaction. Um, and then you have the standardization of beauty uh, that makes only some kind of women attractive to men in the first place. You know, you, men used to be attracted to women, women kind, and today we're attracted to a kind of woman. Uh, super thin, blonde or brunette with straight hair. Uh, you know, we all know 
what that look looks like, but it means that only 10% of women are considered attractive and some 90% are not. And the, the other 90% try to squeeze themselves into that very uh, narrow form. But it, it, it really is uh, uh, an epidemic of, of, of lovelessness. Now, we've talked a lot about the war in, in, in Gaza. I, I never wanted to talk about war. You know, make love, not war. I wanted to talk about love and relationships, which is why I wrote these books. I've been drafted in the war against anti-Semitism to protect my people out of a lack of choice because my people, 75 years after the Holocaust, are now being threatened with an annihilation again. We had the president of Harvard, who still kept her job, who said a week ago in front of the United States Congress that as long as it's in the right context, you can go to Harvard Yard, America's most famous university, and call to gas all the Jews, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how bad this has gotten. Mm -hmm. But I'd much rather talk about relationships and talk about love, because um, love is why we live. Love is what makes life worthwhile. Love is why we fight. We fight in order to have families. We fight in order to protect our children. So by, by my one word answer to your question about how to remedy this, it's, it, it starts with the C, it's the C word. And the word is curiosity. If men and women became curious about each other again, if they stopped, if they turned the damn phones off, if they went on dates and actually spoke about one another and tried to discover each other and explore one another and found humanity interesting, not just to be news junkies or uh, video game junkies or uh, TikTok junkies, uh, if we actually found you, humanity interesting, you would see that dates would go on for longer. People would become more enmeshed with one another. They would fall in love more frequently, more easily. Their lovemaking would be so much more passionate because instead of it being just about the rush to climax, it would be about uh, 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 not, not the destination climax, but the journey, which is to explore each other's bodies fully and to gain pleasure from that exploration, we would transform human relationships. And that's why in Coach for Sex, I emphasize the need for erotic curiosity, emotional curiosity, and intellectual curiosity, and indeed spiritual curiosity. That's the essence of a healthy relationship. Rabbi Shmuley Botiak. And the uh, book is the 25th anniversary edition of Kosher Sex, a recipe for passion and intimacy available wherever good books are sold, Barnes and Noble yeah. online, Amazon. Uh, Rabbi, thank you so much. Yeah, and, can, I, uh, can, I, yeah. can I just, and after condemning social media, let me make sure that you go to my social media so you can read more, more about my condemnations of social media. <laughs> go to, go to uh, Instagram, Rabbi Shmuley, R-A-B-B-I-S-H-M-U-L-E-Y. Go right now, Rabbi Shmuley. X, formerly known as Twitter, Rabbi Shmuley, Twitter, sorry, TikTok, uh, Rabbi Shmuley. Uh, make sure you go to TikTok as well because we want to make sure that President Xi of China can read all of our correspondence. He gets bored during the day, you know. So we want to make sure that he can uh, access everything that you send me. So please sign up on all three. That would be great. God bless you guys. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you.